Hi everyone, and welcome to part 2 of my historical Disney costume of Milan, who is also known as Ping. In the previous video, I showed you how I made the base layers that go under the armor, which means that today I'm showing you how I made the armor itself. Starting off with the breast guards, I used a very stiff iron on interfacing on a cotton twill and a soft iron on interfacing for the brocade. I sewed and machine based them down on one side and the rest will be finished off by bias binding. I'm using a pressing hem to wrap the guards around to accommodate the extra space needed for wrapping. Here you see the difference between lying flat versus wrap. Next, I finished off the edges with a silver silk satin bias. I finished off with hooks and bars closures, alternating with some small poppers. For Milan's helmet, I noticed that it kinda has the same shape as an 1830s bonnet when turned around, turning the neck guard into the brim of the bonnet. Luckily, I still had an unfinished buckram bonnet laying around from a previous project that I could use, made with a Lynn McMaster's pattern. The edges of the buckram are reinforced with spring steel wire and then covered with bias tape. To prevent the buckram texture showing through the satin, I'm using a lightweight brushed cotton as interfacing. And using bookbinder's glue to attach the interfacing. and then trimmed off the excess at the rim. Then I could finally start on the silk layers. I found this beautiful black matte silk satin that perfectly imitates black metal. After sewing on the crown tip, I sewed on the crown inside out for a neat finish. Next up was the outer brim, which I prepped by clipping and ironed the seam allowance in, before sewing it on. The inner brim has decorative pleating, which I prepared by pressing them down first. For the rim and lines to mimic the helmet, I cut out bias strips from charcoal glazed cotton. The nice thing with bias tape is that you can pre-shape them. I used the same glazed cotton for the neck frill and crown lining.
To finish off, I added some big red ostrich feathers and her helmet was done. Moving on to the scaled armor pieces which exist out of the breast and back plates, shoulder plates and the skirt pieces which are called tassets. I used the same cotton twill which I reinforced with the heavy duty iron on interfacing on the places where the leather scales come. I then cut out the same pieces from a green silk which were also backed with the cotton twill. Because my silk was very scarce, I only cut the parts that would show and weren't covered by the leather scales, which led to some creative piecing. Once those two layers were prepped, I could merge them together via the armholes. Due to the placement of the leather scales and the shoulder pieces, the only way to put this on is by putting it over my head with closures under the arm on both sides. After finishing off the neckline with bias tape made out of the same fabric, I pinned the edges of the silk in place and sewed them down with a zigzag stitch. Then I could finally stitch and press the darts in place. To prevent bulk in the waist, I finished the bottom edge with a cotton bias tape. Now that the top was done, I could do the same for the tassets. For a nice flat seam, I always trim the seam allowance and clip my corners. After a good press, I marked the placement for all the ladder scales and all the pieces. Then begin the tedious task of cutting out all the ladder scales. Piercing them. Rounded off the corners. Painting the edges black. And sewing them on. All 840 of them. Now for the last piece I have to keep you guys a little bit longer in suspense. At the time of publishing this video, I was not at all happy with how this final piece turned out and is thus in need of some more tweaking or a complete do-over. So please stay tuned for the final reveal in two weeks and I will leave you with a sneak peek of the 3D printed hilt of the sword. 
Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye!